What's going on family? Welcome to Discover Flavor and today we're going to show you how to make an easy teriyaki chicken recipe without honey. If you're allergic or you don't have any laying around, there's a substitute. So just keep watching. Alright? You will not be disappointed. I promise. But before we do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell for notification and select all so you notify each and every time we upload, family. All right, now let's jump into it. We're gonna go in. We're gonna go in and cube our chicken. The chicken has been cleaned. We trimmed the fat. We want none of that. None of that in this dish. All right, so we're gonna cube that up real quick. Nothing too hard. This is a quick, simple, and easy, easy meal. So this is about a pound and a half of chicken. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit some, heat some olive oil up in a cast iron skillet. I like cooking in my skillet. I know it's not a wok, which is traditional, but it is what it is. And that grease is hot. It's ready to go already. It's already jumping. We're going to go ahead and get that coated. And let's start adding the chicken. And this, this, chicken, this chicken dish right here can be accompanied with some homemade fried rice. If you want to know how to make fried rice, check out the card in the top. All right, we're going to add some garlic powder. Hit it with some seasoning salt. Some black pepper. We're gonna hit it, just, just sprinkle, just, just with a little dash of kosher salt. Just a little bit of kosher salt. That's all you need. Let's give it a mix. As you can see, it's starting to brown already. This, this doesn't take long at all to cook. You wanna make sure that the chunks, um, they're uniform so they cook evenly. And the internal temperature needs to reach at least 165 degrees for it to be fully done. So while that's cooking away, we're gonna add our soy sauce. We got our rice wine vinegar. We got our sesame oil. We got our sweetener. This is our honey substitute right here. We got our minced ginger. We got our minced garlic. Now that minced, that minced ginger, it goes a long way so you can determine how much you like, okay? We have our brown sugar. And we have our cornstarch. So that cornstarch is gonna act as a thickener. So as the sauce heats up, it's gonna thicken up nice and beautifully. Let's give it a nice whisk. You don't want any lumps or anything like that. And we're gonna add just a little bit of water. I think there's one fourth cup of water. Gonna add that sauce right into the pan. As you can see, it's thickening already. I gotta cut the heat down just a tad bit, and that sauce is thickening right up. Okay, not much more cooking is needed. The chicken was almost done, it was brown. Now you're just cooking your sauce down. We're just gonna let that simmer. So now we're gonna Toast some sesame seed in a hot pan. Okay, no oil, anything needed. And we're gonna sprinkle that right on top of this teriyaki chicken with no honey. Okay, we use our substitute. Sprinkle some green onions on there. And this right here can be accompanied with our homemade egg rolls and our homemade fried rice. Okay, if you guys wanna check those videos out, have at it. 
Thank you for watching Discover Flavor. Catch you next time. Peace. What's going on, family? Today I'm cooking for y'all a little curry chicken. So we got our clean chicken washed with lim lime and water. And we're going to add our veggies. We have onions, green and orange peppers. Got them chopped up nice and good for you. Just add them on in there. Come on now, don't be cute now. There we go. Get them on in the bowl. I'm gonna save that shallot for a little later. He look lonely now. Now we're gonna add, we got our seasoning. Gonna add our salt. Got our pepper. Keep it simple. And we have a mixture of red, spicy, and Caribbean curry powder. All right? It's going to give it that flavor, that punch of flavor in these. So we're going to let this marinate. After we after we mix the seasoning up, we're going to let it marinate for a little bit. All right? We're good to go. So we got to get in there. Now, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. But with this curry, as you're going to see later, you know, that, that curry will stick with you. Stay on your hands and that smell. <laughs> It'll stick with you for sure. All right, but make sure it's mixed in. Make sure everything is mixed properly. The smell is amazing. I wish I could smell it, man. Maybe one day if I can cook for y'all. Going to squeeze them onions and the green peppers, the peppers. Let that flavor come, come forth. Come forth flavor. <laughs> mix it real good. After we mix it, prepare some oil. Heat some oil on the side here. I'm going to add a little more. Using extra virgin olive oil. All right, now it's time to burn the curry. So we add the curry to the hot oil. We go ahead and add the shallots now. Let's brown them up and build that level of flavor. And this technique, it pays dividends in the end. You really taste the the nuttiness and the the um, pungent curry flavor. So let's give it a stir. Now it's time to add the chicken. The chicken's been marinating for a few hours. Go we'll add it straight into the pot. Add it straight in. I'm gonna let this stew down. We're gonna let it cook down. Let the chicken brown, let the veggies brown before we finish the process. Let's get everything in the pot. We'll let the chicken cook down from here. Listen, family, if you like the content, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. If you got any food ideas, let me know. I'm here to cook for you guys.
Oh, somebody smells something to eat. Look at the little one. Now, the reason why I'm stirring uh, so frequently is because I don't want it to burn. The, the uh, temperature is high, so I got to keep them constantly moving uh, just to get the browning that I want. Now, this recipe, it came to me uh, by way of mixing the different curry powders uh, from the Caribbean and the, uh, the Middle Eastern. Uh, curry. I just found a different flavor that I liked, so um, you know I bought it home. I bought it home, and the family they enjoy it. So uh, it's kind of you know being in Djibouti or Dubai or uh, Bahrain, and tasting the different curries there, and loving the Jamaican curry powder. You know you combine the two, it's a match made in heaven. <music> Getting the color that we want. Now it's time to add the chicken broth. Yeah, about a cup, a little over a cup, a cup and a half of chicken broth. And then to follow that up with uh, another cup of water. I want too much liquid. And we just let that cook down. Let it cook down. Now you can add coconut, uh, coconut milk. I've added coconut milk to it. Sorry, the footage, uh, footage wouldn't allow me to add it, but let's get a few more stirs and then we can go ahead and plate. So here we have it, curry chicken over a bit of rice, a little garnish uh, with the curry sauce. So I hope this video helped. Hope yours came out as mine's did and enjoy. What's going on family? Welcome to Discover Flavor and today we're making Southern style homemade chicken and dumplings from scratch. But before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you smash that bell and select all so you're notified each and every time we upload. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prep our green peppers. Give them a nice rough chop, nothing too fancy. This is a rustic homemade meal, so that's the approach we're gonna take here. Okay, so we're just gonna quarter them up, throw them right into the pot. We got our pre-peeled carrots. We peeled them earlier. We're just gonna trim off the ends. And give those a nice rough chop as well. Okay, when you're cooking like this, you're cooking that comfort food. You don't need to be perfect. All right, now we have our celery. We're gonna do the same thing. Finish off with our onion. Now we're gonna add our chicken right into the pot. And we're gonna season from here. All right, so we have fresh thyme going in. Season with a little bit of salt. Get it 
with some black pepper. Now we get a, got a little bit of that Saison complete seasoning. This stuff is so good. Of course, we're gonna hit it with our Lowry seasoning salt. You wanna make sure you season it liberally because we're gonna add a lot of water to this, okay? We got two bouillon cubes we're gonna add to this, chicken flavor. straight into there. We're just gonna add enough to cover the chicken. Okay. And get it boiling. We're gonna let that simmer and while that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the dumplings. So we got our flour. We have our bacon powder and a little bit of salt. We're gonna go ahead and give that a good mix. And we're gonna add our Crisco butter flavor short. We're gonna get that mixed into the flour mixture. And we're gonna go ahead and add our cream straight into the flour. Now we're gonna add it slowly, okay, until we get the consistency that we want. I started off with one cup. Wasn't quite where I needed it to be, so we're gonna add more slowly. Add a little bit more. Let's give it a nice little stir. Once you see the flour start to move from the sides of the bowl, it's the texture and consistency that we want right here. Now we're gonna flour our our cutting board, fold the dough right onto the heavily flour board. We're gonna begin to work the dough. <clears throat> we, we're not gonna need it a whole lot. It's not a whole lot that's needed here. All right, we're gonna roll it out to about one eighth of an inch. Now you can roll it out to <clears throat> whatever specs you want to, depending on how thick you want your dumplings to be. All right, I like mine's a little thick, uh, with a little bit of bite, a little bit of bite to it. Give it a nice little roll. And it don't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty. This is a rustic dish. Easy, simple, and delicious. You know, family will love it. And it's a stretch meal as well. You can definitely stretch this meal a few days. So we're gonna cut these into strips. threes but I think I want mine just a little bit a little bit smaller so I'm gonna cut mine uh, a little bit further couldn't have just a little bit more so they're a little bit smaller they're bite-sized So now that the chicken, the chicken has been cooking, it's reached its internal temperature of 165. We're gonna remove it from the, the broth here. And this stuff is amazing. You can drink the broth alone. And we're gonna go ahead and strain it. Now I got this little baby colander in here. <laughs> Not sure what I was thinking, but it is what it is. as much as we 
can before the juices flow over the colander. Let's go ahead and get those veggies out of there. We're gonna try something just a little bit different. Additional strainer. I'll go ahead and get the rest of the juices out of there. Be careful, this stuff is very, very hot. It's straight off the off the heat, so be very, very careful. Be mindful of what you're doing. Let's move that to the side. We're gonna go ahead and remove the uh, sprigs of thyme, the thyme stems. veggies in there and we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and shred the chicken it's already falling off the bone it's already done okay it's just you can let it sit until it's nice and warm but if you're impatient like me throw some gloves on and shred that chicken as fast as you can before your fingertips burn off. <laughs> That's why I'm dropping it right there, man. This stuff is hot. We're gonna get all this meat off of this thing. We want all the meat off the bones. As you can see, we're making quick work of it. Not much to it. I like on the pieces of the uh, the back inside it has like little uh, the, they call it the chicken oyster. I love that part of the chicken. There it is right there. Those are the chicken oysters right there. Go ahead and shred it up just a little bit more. Now at this point, I like to add just a tad bit more seasoning as well. Uh, and I like to add a few pieces of the skin. I just like the, I like the flavor and the texture. I'm gonna add some more of that complete seasoning in there. I like to make sure that my food is well seasoned, okay? A couple more pinches of uh, salt, some garlic. Got more black pepper. And we're gonna go in and add that beautiful broth right back onto the chicken and vegetables. <clears throat> now we made a slurry, which consists of cornstarch and water. Okay, we did like a half a cup. This will actually act as a thickener. This will thicken our sauce, give it that beautiful silky color. All right, it doesn't add any flavor to it, but keep in mind, whenever you add liquids, you need to make sure that the flavor is still intact. The flavor is still there. All right, so you give it a taste. And if you need to re-season or add any more, or add any additional season, feel free to do so. Now we're gonna bring it back to a boil. I'm gonna drop our dumplings right into the bottom of that thing. Now you wanna cook these, depending on their thickness, for about 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Let it simmer down for about 10 to 15 minutes. Simmered away. Look how silky that, that broth is. Now, 
now we're gonna go ahead and play get a nice nice little bowl get you some of those dumplings make sure you get some veggies in there get you a nice heaping spoonful of that chicken so warm and comforting an excellent fall meal Add me another dumpling in there just for good measure. <laughs> These things are amazing, by the way. There you have it, family. Homemade from scratch, chicken and dumplings. Okay, old-fashioned style. We're going to hit it with a little bit of parsley just to garnish. But that's about it. Only thing left is to eat it. Thank you for checking out Discover Flavor. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll catch you next time. Peace. What's going on family? Welcome to Discover Flavor. Today, we're making chicken alfredo from scratch. All right, y'all see it. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of gouda. Freshly grated gouda cheese, smoked gouda cheese. And we're gonna garnish it with a little bit of parsley. And there you have it. Y'all wanna learn how to make it? First, let's go to make sure we hit the subscribe button. Select all so you're notified each and every time we post. Now let's get in. Now we're gonna start off with some chicken tenders. Now I got rid of that little, that little piece of uh, rubbery uh, tendon. We're gonna add our jalapeno garlic powder. Got us a little bit of pepper. And we're gonna go in with just a little bit of salt. Not too much. About two pinches and we're good. Give that a good old mix. And while while that's sitting, let's go ahead and put some olive oil. Let's get our Bertolis in the, in the pan. Get it heated up. And we'll go ahead and add the chicken once it's nice and hot. Let's go ahead and flip them. Look at that nice golden brown color on there. That's what you want. That, my friends, is what you want right there. Now we'll go ahead and remove them from the pan. And let's prep for the Alfredo sauce. So we got a stick and a half of butter. You can definitely just use one stick. All right, I don't know, I just like the flavor of mine. This is what I do. So one stick of butter is sufficient. Let that cook down until it's melted. We're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. Just one tablespoon of garlic. It's equivalent to about one or two cloves. All right, and we're gonna slowly add our heavy cream. Okay. And we're gonna mix that down, get that mixed in there, uh, adding it little by little. Letting it boil up. So that's about two cups of uh, heavy cream. Let it boil down. Then we wanna add our Parmesan and our smoked Gouda. All right, and I use the smoked Gouda because it adds just another level of flavor to it. All right. So go on and get your cheese in there. And let's give that a good mix. Now you're gonna you're gonna start to see it thicken down. It's gonna thicken up nice and and beautifully. It's gonna start to resemble Alfredo sauce. I'm gonna add some more cheese for good measure. Just mix that on in there. Now 
we're gonna hit it with a little bit of salt some black pepper now you can use white pepper in this instance as well if you want to just maintain the color I added so little black pepper it's just gonna melt right into the right into the sauce you can definitely use white pepper now there you go it's it's thickened up right where we want it nice and beautiful that's what you're looking for right there now we got our spaghetti we're using spaghetti in this instance cooked al dente okay we're just gonna spoon over that beautiful alfredo sauce look how creamy that looks let's get those pieces of chicken that we had from earlier let's add that chicken right on top make sure your chicken is cooked to 165 I like to do I like to spoon just a little bit more of that Alfredo sauce right over the chicken somebody can look at this hit it with a little bit more smoked gouda we're gonna hit it with a little bit of fresh parsley There you have it, family. Homemade chicken Alfredo from scratch. Cooked beautifully. Okay. Now we're going to end this with a bye bye to Olive Garden. All right. To Olive Garden, you don't want no more. <laughs> All right. Once you make this thing from scratch, it's no going back to the job. All right. Thank y'all for checking out Discover Flavor. Hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. And hit that bell for notification and select all so you're notified each and every time we post. All right? I hope y'all enjoyed. Thanks for checking us out, family. See y'all next time. Peace. What's going on, family? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to Discover Flavor. Today, I'm going to make some fried chicken, all right? But before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. Select all to get notified each and every time we post. Don't forget to drop me a comment and let me know what you think. So I got my own herbs and spices here. I got a, I got my own seasoning salt mixture. And all of this will become available here shortly, all right? So I got my spice blend, my herb blend, my seasoned salt blend, and of course over here I just got freshly grown black pepper. I found a good sale at the store. I like the eggs. If it's a sale, you got me. So, they had the whole cut fried chicken, whole cut chicken fried. Buy one, get one free. Six bucks. You can't beat that. You cannot beat that. Buy one, get one free, family. So, we're going to go ahead, we're going to open this guy up. And me? I don't know about y'all, but me? I like to wash my chicken. Man. I wash my chicken. I had a, I had a fried, I got a fried chicken recipe. I got a fried chicken recipe from a few months, a few weeks back. <laughs> I did a public service announcement. Wash your chicken, all right? It's imperative that you do so. I believe in each and every one of y'all, man. And I believe that if you just try, you just follow the steps, especially here, I'm here for y'all. If you try and follow the steps, you can make any of the dishes that I make because I make sure that in doing them, they're easy and simple for the single mom, for the stay-at-home mom, okay? For the single father, for the, for the, for the brother that wanna just cook for his wife, cook for his bread, man. Whatever the case may be, listen, I ensure that I make all the recipes so simple everybody can make them, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and wash this off. Lemon. One key to cleaning your chicken, get you some fresh lemon, all right? 
Roll these things out so you can get the maximum juice. Put a little water in there. You wanna make sure when you clean the chicken, you don't have that water splash back out. That's when the germs and everything spread about in the kitchen. Take a couple lemons. We're gonna do something amazing with this chicken. Okay? We're gonna season it up, throw it in some buttermilk, and let it sit in the fridge for about an hour. Okay? I'll tell you, that's something to the meat. It keeps it juicy as it cooks. So many benefits to it. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna season these up. Um, we're gonna season these and then hit it with, uh, I'm gonna put about two cups of buttermilk in there. All right, so let me get the buttermilk. Just wash my hand. So let's go ahead and season these guys up. Dig right in, go to give it a mix. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this, let it sit for about an hour, all right?
got our chicken out. It's been sitting in here for about a, a little over an hour. Now, we're gonna go ahead and season the flour. And so from the batter to the flour, to the fryer. Okay. Let's go ahead and mix that up. Now let's go ahead and heat up our peanut oil. Let's get that up to temperature real quick. All right, family, time to drop the first piece. Let's get these breasts in there until they take them off. There you have it, family. Buttermilk fried chicken. Mm, I'm ready to dig in. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Did you make it? Let me know if this recipe was helpful. Thank you for watching Discover Flavor. Peace. What's going on, family? Welcome to Discover Flavor. And today, we're making grilled chicken glazed with Old Bay hot sauce. Now, if y'all want something good, this shit right here. Man. But before we go any further, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you're notified each and every time we upload. I appreciate y'all. The channel has been growing, man, and it's all due to y'all, man. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and clean this chicken. Got a little lime in there with some water. Go ahead and rinse it out a few times. Now this is a whole chicken. It's cut up in pieces. And we're just gonna clean off the excess fat and excess skin. We're gonna leave the skin on. I want the skin on for this, okay? We're just gonna give it a good wash. Nice rinse. Now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and clean the chicken. Now while we cleaning the chicken, don't forget to go check out our Instagram page where you can discover more flavors. We have different recipes. We have a lot of things we haven't uploaded to YouTube. So go and give it a try. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Drop me a follow. Again, we're just going to clean off the excess skin that we don't want, the additional fat that we don't want. And I love that the thighs still have that little portion of the back meat on there. Got our wings and we're done. Let's go ahead and add them right back into a bowl. We're gonna season these guys up. We got our Everglades chicken seasoning. All right, this stuff is amazing. Of course, we're hitting it with our Lowry seasoning salt. And we're gonna give it a nice, nice amount of Old Bay hot sauce. All right, and once once we mix this up, we're gonna let this sit for just a little bit so all the flavors can come together. Let's give it a good mix. Get it underneath the skin, get it in all the crevices. We need we need Old Bay hot sauce and seasoning in every day on inch of this chicken. So we've been heating our grill up. Got our grill up the temp. All right. And we're gonna add the chicken right in there. Now I have my charcoals divided. Okay. And the cool zone is in the middle. So what I like to do, I like to throw them on the sides first. Get some nice color on there, get them cooking. Look at that. So they've been in there for a good little minute. Got that Fogo Choco doing his thing. All right, already got some color on there. While that's cooking, while that's smoking up, we're gonna go ahead and melt our butter and throw some hot sauce, some more Old Bay hot sauce in there. This Old Bay hot sauce is fire, bro. This stuff is delicious. This stuff is delicious. I'm upset that it says for a limited time, but it is what it is. I'm enjoy it while I can. We're gonna give that a good mix. And this is gonna be that final glaze that we add on the end to the finished chicken. Look at that, so all that flavor's been cooked into the chicken. Now we got it in the middle in the cold zone so it can smoke. And we're gonna hit it right with that Old Bay seasoning and that butter. Man, this is what you want right here. Now I've had just regular Old Bay hot wings and these right here, they, the, the, the regular Old Bay hot wings don't stand a chance, man. They don't stand a chance. The flavor is amazing. All right, it's, it's hot, but not too hot. The added flavor of the butter, man, it's just dope. Look at what we working with, y'all. Now we're gonna go ahead and plate up, man. They done. Now this is some of the best chicken that I've grilled thus far fast flavor and it remain juicy that's what it's all about make sure that you, you cook
cook your chicken to the internal temp of 165 degrees. And there you have it, family. Grilled chicken glazed with Old Bay hot sauce. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for checking out Discover Flavor. Catch y'all next time, family. Peace. What's going on, family? Welcome back to Discover Flavor. Today, we're making Southern Style Fried Chicken with a twist. We're going to dip it in jalapeno kettle chips. But before we do, please hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. Select all so you're notified every time we post, all right? So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to go ahead and clean our chicken. Me, personally, I like to remove the skin and the fat from the chicken thighs, but I, I leave the skin for the chicken drumstick, okay? The drumstick, I leave the skin. I don't know, it's personal preference. Do what thou wilt. If you wanna leave the skin, if you wanna take it off, it's up to you, all right? Prepping this just reminds me of watching grand my grandmother, my mother, everybody prep chicken. I had an uncle named Earl, that dude, man, he could fry some chicken now. If he couldn't do nothing else, he could fry some chicken. <laughs> All right, go ahead and remove that fat. Get everything nice and prepped. Now we're gonna season. So we got a little salt here, not too much sodium. All right, we're gonna add our salt. We got our garlic powder. We're gonna go ahead and add our oregano. We got some margarine. We're gonna follow that by some basil. All right, we're gonna hit it with a little cilantro. Then we're gonna, we're gonna freshly ground some pepper. And then we got some smoked paprika and some chili powder. Now this is my herbs and spices. I don't need nobody else's recipe. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and get our hands dirty. We're gonna mix this up real fast. Make sure that the, the seasoning gets in all the cracks and crevices. Massage that thing through. So every bite is a bite of deliciousness. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the kettle chips, the jalapeno kettle chips, and we're gonna go to crush those guys up. Give them a nice, nice crunch. All right, you can use any utensil you can. We're gonna take some baking soda, and we're gonna add it to our flour. And we're gonna go ahead and crack two eggs. All right, we're gonna go ahead and mix those guys up. And this is the beginning of our dredging station. All right. Give it a nice, good mix. Now we're gonna go to add our milk. And let's give that a stir. Mix that on there. Now, I learned this from watching my grandma. I'm not even gonna hold you. She used to make the best chicken. Her, my uncle Earl. I just remember significantly those two in particular making the best chicken that I've eaten. So we'll take the chicken. We'll go ahead and dip those in flour. And we're gonna go ahead and dredge those in the egg and milk mixture. Dip them in the chips. And that's all to it, folks. Okay. Again, we're gonna go ahead and from the flour, the egg and milk mixture, and that's gonna make the chips stick. All right, go ahead and dip them in the chips and that's it. There you have it. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and put our peanut oil in the pan, and we're gonna quickly bring this oil up to temperature. Me personally, I love peanut oil. You can use vegetable oil, you can use canola, whichever one's more cost effective and you know, meets your taste. Not mine. So we're gonna go ahead and add the pieces of chicken in there. And we're gonna just start to brown. You see blood just starting to come out. That's when you know it's time to flip them. Now look at how gorgeous that chicken is right there. Man. Delicious, you know what I'm saying? That nice golden brown crust on it. Mm, I can't wait to eat it. Prepare the last batch. So I prepared my chicken in batches. I don't crowd the pan. Okay, no more than four pieces. Look at that. So as we flip, you see the golden brown crust on the end. 
and that's all to it folks okay let it cook down make sure the internal temperature is 165 degrees and there you have it family just garnish with a little parsley if you want to be a little bougie okay simple recipe just made to look delicious that's it all right if you like what you see don't forget to hit that like button drop me a comment thanks for joining discover flavor family peace what's going on family welcome to discover flavor and today we're making yak but before we do don't forget to hit that subscribe button click that bell so you're notified each and every time we post make sure you select all now we're gonna start off with some some, some good old chicken thighs Go on, let's trim these chicken thighs up man. just gonna trim off a little of the fat we don't need all that hey if you eat fat you get fat that's what they say and while i'm while i'm prepping this chicken man hey look Go over to Instagram, look up Discover Flavor TV, and follow me. It's a lot of dishes on there that I hadn't made on YouTube, so hey, you might want to check them out. Okay? I appreciate the support, family. Let's jump back into it. Now that we got most of the fat trimmed off, we're gonna go in and we're gonna go in and slice these up real quick. Okay? Slice them up nice and even. So they cook. They cook even. Now we're gonna throw these to the side and prep these veggies. Change your cutting boards. So we got a green pepper here. All we need is one. All right. We're gonna julienne those. We got a half an onion. We'll need a lot. Okay, we're just gonna finally slice those onions. Get us some extra virgin olive oil in the in the pan. We're gonna heat that up. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken right into the pan. I'm telling you, man, I love I love the the taste and smell of fresh olive oil. Let's add our Discover Flavor Chicken Seasoning, which is coming soon. Y'all better stay tuned. Okay. We're going to hit it with a little salt. And let's give that thing a stir. Now let's add our green peppers right into the hot pan. And we're going to slide our onions right on in there. We're gonna let this cook down. We're gonna let it cook down. All right, we're gonna throw the lid on there and let it go until it's time to add our, our secret sauces to the dish. Let's go in and add our minced garlic. Now, this garlic gonna add so much flavor. Love me some garlic now. Hit it one more time with that Discover Flavor Chicken Seasoning. It's gonna change our life, man. Somebody come look at this. Look at all them flavors just mixing together, man. You don't get no better than this, man. Throw the top on there. Get our boiled eggs ready. Man, it would've hot. Gonna crack our eggs. I like to do it fresh out the hot, out that heat, man. Shock it with some cold water. They crack so easily. These are them farm fresh eggs, straight from local fair. Straight out the chicken, man. It ain't processed like those other ones. Now we're gonna go to add our lo mein noodles in. Now, traditionally, yaka main is a Virginia dish where we use spaghetti, okay? I'm going to use lo mein, all right? I like these lo mein noodles. They cook fast, easy, and they're delicious. 
Now, if you're from the seven cities, you know what Yak is. If you're outside of VA, I don't know if you know what's going on, but hey, I'm going to show y'all the way, all right? Just give it a try. Don't judge it. Just give it a try. Now, make sure you wash these. You don't want them to stick. They don't take long to cook at all. Just a few minutes. Just let them boil down. We're going to take them out and drain them and instantly hit them with some cold water. Okay. They are dente at this point, so they're good. So we're going to add the finishing touches to the yakame or what makes this yak. Okay. We're going to add our ketchup. Got to have the ketchup. We got our soy sauce. That La Choice. That's what I use. That La Choice soy sauce is fire. And we got our hot sauce, man. Got to have our hot sauce. We're going to give it a mix. And we're going to let that simmer down. It's just something about the ketchup, hot sauce, and soy sauce with the noodles, man. It's just it's different. It hit different, man. It's a V8 thing right here. So we're going to go ahead and add our lo mein straight into the bowl. And we're just going to spoon that mixture right over top of that lo the lo mein noodles. Don't be stingy with it either. One of them five step meals, man. You take five steps, you gotta sit down somewhere. You full. Got the noodles covered. Got the chicken. Got the got the onion. Got the green peppers. You know what's next? Gotta cut that egg up. Get your egg up in there, man. Let's sprinkle some green onions on there. Just, 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 just a little bit. Just a little bit. I love me some green onions. And that's it, man. There you have it. VA inspired yacht, man. I want to thank all my subscribers, man. I appreciate your love and support. And if you have a YouTube channel, listen. Drop your, drop your channel in the comments, and I will support you. That's what I'm here for. I want to network. I want to build, and I want to grow with y'all. All right. Thank y'all for checking out Discover Flavor. I hope y'all enjoyed what y'all saw. Catch you next time. Peace. What's going on, family? I'd like to welcome y'all back to Discover Flavor. And today, we have spatchcock chicken. So prepare. Get yourselves ready. Get yourself ready to taste and to try some of the most delicious chicken you'll ever eat in your life. I promise you. Just follow what I do in this video, and you can't lose. And if you like what you see, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think, and shoot me your ideas. And with that, let's get into it. Alright, first you want to get your freshly clean chicken, okay? You clean up some of the extra trimmings, get some of the fat out the way. I like to take that little tail piece off the back of the chicken as well. You know, we know we know what comes out of there, so we gotta get it, we gotta get it going. All right, so now we're gonna cut along the back. This process is called spatch, it's called the spatchcock, okay? Spatchcock the chicken. And what I like about this process is, okay, when, you, when you're able to do it successfully, everything's, everything cooks evenly, all right? Everything cooks evenly. So you don't have to worry about the breast being done, but not the thighs or the legs, etc. all right? So we're gonna go ahead and start with our carrots. Start getting them peeled and ready to go. Get you some fresh carrots now. I like to peel them right in the bowl, easy clean up. Cut the tips off and then, you know, we're gonna make some, make some rustic cuts. Oh, you ain't gotta be pretty. Throw them in a bowl. Let's get those onions. 
Same thing here. You know, we're gonna cut them roughly, roughly chop them. There we go, peppers. You know, just a little bit. You know, get them in there. Potatoes, got some, some beautiful assorted fingerling potatoes. Look at that color, that's just beautiful, man. I like I like cooking with a lot of color, man. It's just beautiful. You know? Now you want to season your veggies, throw some nice olive oil in there, just hit it with some salt and some pepper, man. I got some onion pepper, some garlic powder, my special seasoning blend. Mix that up. Look at that. That's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. I don't know what it is, man. It's something about, you know, eating with your eyes first. You know, that color is nice. Now we got the veggies. We got your fresh chicken there. Okay, I think it's gonna, hey, the flavor we develop on here is gonna be amazing. Trust me. We're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna season the chicken up. We got some olive oil here. I get up in there, up in that skin right there by the breast, by the thighs. We got some lowries. I got some lowry seasoned salt. Rub that on in there. There go our garlic powder. Basic, basic seasonings. Nothing, nothing too extravagant. Okay, definitely hit it with some salt. Get the inside cavity as well. Now I'm telling you, family, when you when you eat this now, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for a nap. It's gonna go down. Then you have your melted butter. Get that butter all up in there, man. Get it, get it all in the cracks, crevices. Get it under that skin. You'd be amazed at the flavor that this butter helps achieve. You know? I got some fresh thyme. Put the thyme up in there. Under the skin. Look at that. Flavor, man. I love fresh herbs. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna put the potatoes face down. So those those on the bottom, they're gonna be the best. They're gonna be the crispiest. They're gonna have that flavor just just baked into them. We're gonna layer the layer the veggies around it, and those veggies will get the flavor from the chicken, and the chicken will lend that flavor uh, to the veggies. All right, to the oven. Got our oven set to 375. We'll let that go. About an hour, hour and a half. There you go. Fresh out the oven, baby. Spatchcock chicken with potatoes and veg veggies. Got a nice little bowl. I just, I just love the design on that bowl. It's beautiful. You can't see it because it's the top view, but it is what it is. Let's cut through there. Let's, let's, somebody, somebody, come help me out here. With that steam, that juiciness of the chicken. Oh man, we ready to go. I said, hey, well, if y'all make this, prepare yourself. You're gonna take a long nap. <laughs> You're gonna take a long nap. All right. Let's go ahead and get some of those potatoes in there. Those carrots. Those onions. 
peppers. Let's get all those in there. I want, I want you to have the perfect bite. Got those onions in there. Potatoes and peppers. Look at that brown, that browning they got on those potatoes. Crispy on the outside, it's soft and delicious on the inside. I'm gonna hit it with some of that, that butter and olive oil and chicken juice. Can't forget those drippings on the bottom. This takes it up like 18 levels. And there you have it, fam. Spashcock chicken, potatoes, vegetables. Enjoy. We have homemade egg rolls from scratch. Hope y'all enjoy. Now we got a little bit of olive oil going in the pan. And we're gonna go ahead and add our Napa cabbage. We freshly cleaned it and we just cut it nice and you know evenly. We julienned it a little bit. Let's try to fit it all in. It looks like a lot now, but it's really not. Because once it cooks down, you'll see. All right, let's get a top on there and let's let that go. Now it's been cooking for a little bit, hadn't seasoned it, hadn't really done too much to it. Go to mix it around, but look how much it's reduced. So this is two small heads of Napa cabbage. Okay, you can find it in your local grocery stores. So we're gonna go ahead and add our onion. And add our julienne carrots. We're gonna give it a nice stir. Hey family, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications, drop me a comment, let me know what you guys think, all right? Gonna add our salt. Freshly ground black pepper. Ain't nothing like that fresh ground black pepper. And we got the Chinese seven spice right here. Give it a stir. We're gonna let that cook down some more. As you see, it's still water in the bottom of the pan. You gotta let that water dissipate. Go ahead and throw the top back on there and let it cook down. While it's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the chicken. Add a few tablespoons of olive oil in there. Just enough to coat the pan. And this chicken has been marinating uh, for about, I say about four hours. I seasoned it up with the Japanese, with the Chinese seven spice, some hoisin, a few other choice things, salt, pepper, things of that nature. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a quick stir, it's a quick saute. All 
All right, it's been cooking for about five to six minutes now. We're gonna go ahead and add the veggies back in there. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna season this one more time for flavor. Then we're gonna add the big boy spice in there, the big boy sauce, the holy sing. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit it with that that seven spice again. This stuff adds so much flavor to the to the uh, to the cabbage and chicken. And now we're gonna add our hoisin sauce. And with this, I like to add just a few dashes of uh, soy sauce as well. Two tablespoons of garlic. I said one one tablespoon of garlic. And give it a nice mix. And we're gonna let this cook down, let those flavors develop. And then we're gonna set it aside to let it cool. Now that it's set for a few minutes, about, I say about 10 minutes, and it's cooled down, we're gonna go start filling out egg rolls. So get a little bit of the cabbage and, and chicken. We're gonna start rolling them out. Have you some water right there to dab. That's all you need. Some people use egg, egg wash. I mean, you can use that as well. Water does the trick. And you wanna just fold them up. Like an envelope. And there you have it. Speed through just so you guys can see how to roll them. And then we're gonna fry these guys up. And I made enough mixture where uh, we had extra. Definitely had leftovers. This made about 28 to 30 egg rolls. Now we got some peanut oil, just heat, well, we heat it up. And we're gonna throw them right down in the peanut oil. I like peanut oil, it has a high heat point, doesn't burn too quickly and it gives the food so much flavor so I definitely recommend frying in peanut oil I stay away from the canolas and things of that nature vegetable oil sometimes but I use peanut oil it's a little bit more expensive but you know you get what you pay for definitely get what you pay for all right let them come to a nice golden brown They cook up pretty fast. It don't take long. I see a minute or so per side. And there you have it, family. Homemade egg rolls from scratch. <laughs>